Back on the Super Show, Shafter Highs, Gerald Perucci in town. And I say er, in, in town and in studio. I say Shafter Highs, Gerald Perucci, because he is the new coach there. But you are also that is your high school. That's your you're, you're the hometown kid. Yeah, that's where I'm. Uh, that's the uh, place that I can say educated me through the high school years. Yeah, man. Yes. As the kids would say, well, that's your jam. I just called you a kid. When was the last time anybody called you a kid? A long time. I was kind of depressed. I just turned forty. So, uh, you know, you always get happy when you go to uh, to the store and. You buy a bottle of wine or something, they still ask you to kick out your ID. Yeah. I didn't get ID'd. I was kind of depressed. That happened to us yesterday in the airport. Somebody I really? Yeah. I looked at him. I laughed at him, actually. Yeah, that's funny. I get I get happy and thank them whenever yeah. I do that. I, believe it or not, I get carded from time to no. time. So no. No, not my cherub yeah, looking The goatee buddy. helps. No, Coach, I like this. <laughs> I kind of like this narrative. I mean, us as, as journalists, we like to push the narrative. I know. But, he, okay, he, so – you started your coaching head coaching career in Kern County at East High. Yes. Uh, had had a couple of down years. Went to Bakersfield Christian. Had some very good years. You're 35 and 35 overall. It's like it's like a good place <laughs> to restart, you know. And and, uh, and now you're back home, and it sort of feels right that you should start it, kind of start at that even spot, and just see what happens. Right? Yeah, you know, I mean, I was talking to somebody the other day, and and they asked me, are are you nervous or do you feel pressure and stuff? And and I kind of, I, I really feel like my career all the way up to now has kind of led me to this place. I mean, mm. when I feel sorry for the kids I coached at East High because I was such a young coach, right. head coach, that you go through so much learning when you're be at just starting out as a head coach and now going through that time to BCHS and then even up to, to BC last year has just uh, matured me so much as a, as a coach that I'm just so different than what I was when I first started. And I know a lot of that change is probably in the details. You, you learn how to do different things more easily and smoothly, but uh, overarching philosophy, has anything changed for you between East High and now? No, not really. I, I think, you know, offensively, I, I think I'm, I've, I've kind of matured in the ways. I always knew what I wanted to do, but I think everything looks good on paper, and I think that's the thing when you first come in as a, as a new head coach. You have things that you want to do, and I think this is going to work, and throughout time, you kind of mold and kind of shape yourself to what you want to do both sides of the football and then you find the other good thing is all this time I've really developed relationships with coaches that uh, good coaches that have come with me to Shafter and, and have uh, really improved the opportunity for my kids to have success there because we're all on the same page as coaches. So yeah, it's really absolutely. Good. All right, Gerald, we know very well that you love a high octane offense. You had a very, uh, very prolific quarterback at BCHS and a young man, uh, well, oh God, what was his name? Oh, yeah, Brandon Jones. Talk to him today. Yeah, I'm joking. The Aztec. Yeah. Yes. Um, you got a guy, Alex Aguilar, that's going to be a sophomore. That's a sophomore for you this year. Uh, you're high on him. With your offense, it's going to rely on his arm and what he can do. Um, talk to us about him and what you think is kind of uh, out there for him in the next three years. It starts next week. Yeah. I know. Um, I think with Alex that I've just kind of – as I've gotten to know him as, as not only a football player, but as a human being, um, the kid is a big time competitor, but he also, he, he keeps everything kind of even kill. He's never too high. He's never too low. He'd be a great poker player. Uh, reminds me a lot of Brandon in that way. I mean, Brandon, he'd throw a pick and come off the field and go, I'm going to throw that same ball, but I'm going to complete it next time. Uh, Alex has a lot of that. The thing that Alex has that Brandon did not, um, is, you know, he went to the Valley Championship meet as a 200 hurdler as a freshman. Hmm. So he's got some wheels on him. Uh, Brandon was quick, but uh, Alex has some uh, north and south speed. Uh, the, the other aspects of it that I, that I like about Alex is the fact he's very coachable and he's starting to pick up what we do. Um, and that sometimes can take quarterbacks a long time. But he's been able to really dive into what we do and, and study and – do everything you're supposed to as a, as a quarterback and uh, has really stepped into the role and, and is, is starting to become really comfortable back there. And I think the exciting thing about that is if he's doing that as in the preseason as a sophomore, my gosh, in a couple of years, and he that, might really that, have that's, something. Yeah. That's ultimately where we were going. And I don't want to talk about 2018 yet or anything like that, but, I mean, it is part of it. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing where we kind of decide as a coaching staff, do we want to – do we want to kind of take our lumps this year with Alex as a quarterback? Um, and we decided, yeah, I mean, with the group of guys we have up front and the running back behind him, I think we could take a little bit of pressure off him having to expect him to win games. Now I think he can come in, make football plays, be an athlete, be make make uh, just 
you know, make the easy throws and, and yep. extend, stretch the field when we need to, but he can really rely on that running game. And, and you talk about the Nick running Perez. game, Nick Perez, yeah. Yeah, Nick is, is by far our workhorse. I mean, uh, the thing is, though, he's – he's really the leader on the defensive side of the ball. So if he's going to get any rest, it's going to be on the offensive side of the ball. So we actually have a sophomore that's going to be standing next to a sophomore uh, in our backfield when Nick is not in there with Emilio, Emilio Villagran. So you have a few more gray hairs. By the yeah, you know, I, I've already suspected that. Everybody says I turn, you know, I call it the George Clooney effect. But uh, <laughs> I like no, that. Nobody, <laughs> nobody sees it that same way. But does your wife even see that Actually, one? Actually, she's the one that gave that to me. Okay, God that's, that's a good that, sign. That's yeah, a that good thing, a good you know, sign. so that, that's always a good thing. But hey, yeah. we're all married men here. We got that. <laughs> exactly. Oh. She's got to be the biggest fan. She is. So, uh, so yeah, it's even Zach though. Zach didn't even catch in on that. I did. No, oh, I did. Okay. You're just. I'm, I'm moving on to the next thing in my head. That's all right. That's but. good. So, yeah, we're, we're Nick is by far our workhorse, but uh, he's definitely going to be the guy we have to lean on on the defensive side of the ball, so he won't come off the, off the field there. He'll get some rest on offense. The, the good news is you talk about a sophomore sending us to a sophomore. The line does have some experience. And that, yes. that is – if you didn't have that, then you'd really have gray hairs. Yeah, we're, we're going to start four seniors there and then one, one uh, junior. And, uh, you know, the, the stud there is, is Mike Osario. He's probably a kid that I uh, – just, you know, you get relationships with kids. And Mike got into a little bit of trouble and uh, has come back to us a changed person. I mean, it's one of those really good success stories where you have a kid that that messed up in life, figured out that he messed up, and now he's really dedicated himself to doing what's right all the time. And he's really bought in and is leading our offensive line to uh, uh, to a, a different level. Our, my offensive line coach does a great job with those kids, preparing them for not only what we do with the zone blocking and pass protection, but those kids really – I like them because they really play with an attitude. So. And that type of story, Gerald, uh, that, that you talk about with Mike Osorio – is why you coach, you oh. know, but absolutely. But does it take on even another level of meaning when it's a hometown kid? I mean, you, you feel like you're kind of giving back to where you came from. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, that's what we're here to do. I mean, yeah, it's it's about football, but, you know, football is just a platform for the relationships that we create with kids, mm -hmm. and that's really what, you know, living's about is the relationships that you make. And uh, seeing a kid like Mike who a lot of kids would have said, I got hosed in this whole deal. He took it on his own shoulder, owned his mistakes, and did his, uh, did his time away from, uh, from Shafter High School at a different campus and has come back and has been a just a solid, solid individual and leader, uh, one cool. that kids can really look over and say, that's, that's a kid that I wouldn't mind being later on in life. Gerald, you uh you scrimmage at East this week. Yes. And then you're on the road the first three weeks. So yeah. September sixteenth. Yeah, awesome. So September sixteenth, you I mean, we're talking about it as we stand right now. You still got another month before you get to step back on the field at Shafter for the first time in how many years? I mean, have you thought about, you know, what that moment is gonna be like for you? I mean, obviously you coach there numerous times at BCHS and at East, but have you have you really kind of thought about what it's gonna be like to wear that shirt on that night and go, I'm back home? Uh no. Uh, and I've been really my, – my assistant coaches do it all the time. They're, they're looking ahead. They're looking at all these other games and everything else. I, I, I'm going cliche. I, I've, I've, I haven't looked past Miramonte. I know we're, we have East this week with, with our scrimmage, but Miramonte, is, to me, is, starts the whole season off. I mean, getting a W your first week and, and to a team that beat us last year um, is, a, is a big deal for me. So uh, – to me, the homecoming's only sweet if we're three and zero going in the homecoming. So, uh, I think uh, it's going to be a cool experience and a cool deal. But right now, I'm just worried about the the, the first game against Miramonte. Let's let's take a step back and talk about Shaffer. This is a proud program, as you well know. 22 league titles in your history, a couple of Valley titles, but it's been down for a good decade now. Um, when you stepped in and sort of took stock of, of where the program was at, what did you see and, and where did you see the need for change? I think the one of the cool things was is I played them every year. So True. it wasn't like I didn't know what they had or, or I wasn't aware of their situation up and down the program. Um, so when, when uh, the job came open and I threw my hat in, I knew exactly what I had. And, that, and like I tell the kids, I didn't come here to lose. And I really feel like – we have an opportunity there uh, to do some really, really good things here this year and really set this program on a new path. And uh, and it's been good so far. 
I just wanted you to know, in our in our special section, which comes out next Thursday, we well, one thing we're doing this year is the best case scenario for each team if things go right, basically. And one of the things we have in there is that you beat Wasco for the first time in like nine years. So no pressure or anything. But I know that that one and, – and I, see, you're, you're saying you take it week by week, and here I'm jumping 10 weeks. But. Well, I'll be honest. I, I, can't, I can't walk 10 feet if I'm downtown in Shafter without somebody. It doesn't say anything to me about, hey, how are you looking this year? What's it look like for the season? Are you going to beat Wasco? That's the first thing they ask. I mean, in, in that city, in both cities, it's the only thing that matters. I yeah. mean, yeah, you can you – know, you could be 9-1, and one, and that 1 is 2 – Wasco, it's going to be, oh, you had a great season, but. And so right. that's, you know, we talk about that a lot as a program. But, um, you know, if we get to that week week 10 game and, and uh, we end up beating Wasco, I, I'm, I firmly believe we will uh, and end the streak. It's because we're doing all the other things right. You don't beat a team like Wasco if you're not doing things right. Well, and how much more special is it when that game means something to both teams? Yes. Which it hasn't in a little while. Uh, you know, Wasco's had some good seasons. Well, and, and I, it also means a lot, too, because it's Gerald's first year back at hometown and then mm-hmm. for Mike Rowland, his first year taking over for Prado. So, I mean, there's you know there's bragging rights really for the both of you to get started off on the right foot. Right, and we talked to Mike earlier today. and uh, You know, I, I just think it's, it's, it's one of those cool rivalries, and it's, it's just unbelievable when, when the pageantry is going on and, and, and everything else. So that's part of it, too. Um, before we let you go, Gerald, last year you spent – kind of this year of purgatory outside of high school football, but you were up at BC coaching up there. What did you take away from that? Oh, well, probably the biggest thing is the amount of good coaches they have up there. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I gained so much knowledge from just sitting down with, you know, Carl Dean, their offensive coordinator. Carl and I talk a lot, uh, and uh, uh, we actually found kind of a, a, a good relationship with each other. Because, you know, when you go up there, you're like, oh, it's a high school guy, you know. And uh, even though Carl and I had a relationship before that, um, our kids go both go to the same Awanas, so we see each other every th- every Wednesday. Oh, very but, cool. Um, but it, it's the the thing that I appreciated and I learned a lot more up there was the finer points. I think in high school we we kind of because of our time restraints, we kind of I, I think cut corners on some things. But it really got me focused on on the respect and the process of preparing to win each week. No and doubt it makes you a better coach. Though. Oh, yeah, it does. I mean, when you're sitting there, and it was seven-day week. Of ju- I mean, I was there seven days a week. Yeah. I mean, the only day I had off, but we, I was off recruiting, was on Fridays. So when they did walkthrough, they gave me the – I was at a different high school game every week, which was great because I got to still see high school kids. But it's seven days a week, and you're breaking down film and really fine points of things that I learned a whole lot more to make our style of offense that much better. Well, now you're at Shafter, and uh, we'll see what what year one brings for you. Gerald Perucci of Shafter, we appreciate you joining us. Thanks, guys, for having me. All right, we'll be right back after this. And up next, Foothills' Jason Oliver in the house.